Welcome to Life with David. I'm David and today my basement sump pump is acting up. The float switch recently got a little temperamental and isn't reliably starting the pump when the water gets high. It's Saturday night, it's raining, and I'm tired. So why don't you join me as we turn to an Arduino to make a temporary fix so I can get some sleep. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. This time we're working with pumps, dirty water, and electricity. Nasty things can happen if you aren't careful. You could shock yourself or get some crappy water in your eyes or mouth. Also, be sure that you don't impede the normal operation of the pump. You could cause flooding if the pump is damaged. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now, let's get started. I've had several Zoller sump pumps over the past four decades. The pump itself is very durable, but the float switch gets a little flaky after about five years. Unfortunately, the switch decided to go spastic on a Saturday night, right during the middle of a huge rain event here in Ohio. It mostly works, but every now and then, if the water is rising very slowly, the switch will fail to turn on. A simple tap on the piping is enough to snap the switch on. In order to get a little sleep over the next few nights until the replacement switch arrives and the wet weather stops, I'm going to make a little device to jog the pump every now and then. I've got a servo and several different microcontrollers. I'll use the servo to tug on a wire attached to the float switch lever. That should be enough to nudge the pump if it gets hung up. I've been working with the Raspberry Pi Pico recently, but since it runs at 3.3 volts, it really doesn't drive the 5 volt servo I have well enough to use. So I decided to use a 5 volt Arduino which drives the servo very crisply. To attach the servo to the pump, I'll use a scrap 1x4 as the base. Drill a hole that's the same size as the outlet pipe, which is 2 inches in this case. I rip the board through the middle of the hole so I can clamp both sides of the board to the pipe. Then I attach the servo to the base with some thin plywood. I'll hook the SG92R servo to an Arduino Mega 2560. The yellow wire on the servo is connected to a PWM output on the Arduino and the orange and brown wires are connected to 5 volts DC and ground respectively. Now it's time to program the Arduino. The float switch works most of the time, I just need to bump it every now and then to keep the sump at a safe level. I figured that jiggling the float switch every hour would do the trick. I'll write about the simplest sketch I can. Include servo.h and create the servo object. Attach a servo to whatever PWM output you choose. In this case, I connected mine to pin 9. I found that a servo position of 0 degrees for the down position and 160 degrees for the up position seemed to work okay. After entering the loop, write the switch up position of 160 degrees to the servo. Then sleep for a little more than a half second and then write the switch neutral position of zero degrees. After that, sleep for an hour before we do it all again. Really simple. Download the program and test it out. It looks okay, so let's mount the servo to the pump. Since this is temporary, I'll just clamp the mounting board to the pipe. I use some thin stainless steel tie wire to connect the arm of the servo to the float switch. Make a fairly large loop in the wire around the float switch so the switch can move normally when the servo is in the down or zero degree position. You don't want the pump to be stuck when the water is low because it'll burn out and then you'll be screwed. After the board and wire are attached to the pump, Feed the wire through the end hole of the longest arm on the servo and bend it at a location that energizes the float switch when the servo is at the top position and allows for normal float operation when the servo is down. 
you may have to adjust the position on the mounting board, the position of the arm on the servo, or the rotation angle of the servo to make everything work together. After I finished installation, I cycled the servo a few times by pressing the reset button to make sure the float switch could operate freely. It looked fine, so I started the program, made sure it cycled after an hour, and then I went to bed. Success! Thanks for joining me today. I used some parts I had laying around the house to temporarily fix my sump pump float switch. I've received the replacement switch and now I'm just waiting for a dry spell so I can take the pump out of service for a couple hours. I'll change the switch for a small fraction of the price of a new pump and it should be good for another five years. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!